Welcome to my review of Unity UT139C multimeter. This is first multimeter from Unity that I've owned. And first thing I'd like to note is that the package is same for every multimeter on the series. So it says UT139 on the front, but you have to check on the top what actual model has been checked. And as there's no any information on the box what the differences between the models are, you have to check those online beforehand. The meter on the photo is the best one of the series, so it might have some features that your actual meter won't have. So be sure to check what model you are actually getting. Of course, if you are ordering from online, that won't be a problem. That might be common sense for some, but if one is getting his first multimeter, that might be something he's not thinking about. Let's see what comes in the box. First there are two notes from Frankie, who was kind enough to send me this multimeter for free, so I could make this review. There aren't any batteries, that's just some shipping regulations. And here's Frankie's website, 99centhobbies.com. You can find a link to his eBay store in that webpage. He sells, for example, test leads, XYZ Studios, USB monitors that few other YouTubers, for example Martin and Julian, have been reviewing few different kind of multimeters at different price points and some other stuff. For updated product list and prices go to the 99centhobbies.com and check out what he is currently selling. So thank you again Frankie for sending me this multimeter, I'll definitely buy something from your store in the future. I'll put an actually clickable link into the description. And now for the actually content of the box. There aren't much accessories with this multimeter. There are test leads and this temperature probe and that's it. No carrying back or anything like that. The temperature probe is Basically the same as any other cheap K-type thermocouple, but there's one difference between this and the prop that came with the Owen B35, and that is the plug. This has one big plug which includes both the positive and negative terminals, while the Owen's temperature prop had separated plugs for each of these. I would probably add some kind of color information on this plug, because this white text on the yellow background isn't very visible. Like I have said in the previous reviews, the test leads on this price range are quite similar. If you want extra flexible silicone test leads with gold plated tips, you have to buy them separately. There isn't going to be huge differences between the test leads on this price range. The plugs are quite similar. There might be a little bit of differences on the flexibility depending on wire size and such things, but this is quite similar to Fluke 101 and Owen b 35s leads that I've tested. The biggest difference will be on the probe's tips and the extra insulation caps covering the tips. These caps look quite similar to the Owen b 35s but these don't have threads, instead these come off just by pulling them. There's groove on the probe and some rubber knobs on the inside of the cap. And as the cap is made out of wrapper, it will wrap quite nicely on the probe, so it won't come off accidentally. For the sharpness of the tips, I'll have to give 3 stars out of 5. These are sharp enough for measurement jobs, but these won't be sharp enough for piercing stuff. But like I said, they will do their job perfectly fine. One thing that I almost forgot is the operation manual. There is one in the package, but it's Chinese. That might not be the case if you are buy the multimeter from, from outside the China or Hong Kong. But even if you get the user manual that you can't understand, you can download the English manual from the Unitrend website. It will have mostly the same information on it than what's inside this Chinese manual. Before turning on the meter, let's see how's the build quality and what kind of features this multimeter is supposed to have. The first impression when picking up the meter is that it feels very solid, plastic is decent quality and the rubber around the meter is very soft and it's removable, unlike in the O1 multimeter that I reviewed previously. Instead of having some kind of lock that holds the stand on the open position, it has this spring action which will either push the stand in the open or closed position and it won't stay in the middle. 
The position, angle and size of the stand are perfect. Pressing the buttons or using the selector switch won't tip off the multimeter. The selector switch is kinda tight. Turning it may turn the multimeter as well, depending on what kind of surface the table has. But I wouldn't say that the selector switch is too tight, especially when holding the multimeter with another hand, it's easy to operate. On the back of the rubber there are holders for the probes. They will hold the probes tightly and the tips won't be sticking out, so they are a good way to hold the probes when storing the multimeter on the back or something. There's also a slot where you can attach a neck strap or magnetic strap or similar thing, even though one didn't come with the multimeter in the box. Let's then see what this multimeter can measure. First, there's off position on the left side, then there's volts, both DC and AC. It has variable frequency control, and there's millivolt range, which has higher input impedance. Then there's this combination, position versus ohms, continuity, diode, and capacitance. I believe there's one too many. At least one of them could be on the another position between this combination position and the temperature. There's dedicated frequency and duty cycle position. There are microamps, milliamps and amps for the current. Then there's this nice feature called non-contact voltage detection or something like that. It can detect electric field. So if you put this meter close to the wall where there should be a mains wire, it flashes the LED and makes a beeping sound. And last position is the current clamp, which didn't come in the box, so I can test that. The button layout is quite classic and there are a few gotchas. For example, this yellow button has hold and light, and even though it's same color text as this frequency and duty cycle marks, the frequency slash duty button is this one on the right. The relative measurement button works like usually, and it makes the meter go manual range. The max min button has the maximum and minimum functions, and it has one extra feature which I'll be showing later. There's the range pattern which can override the outranging mode. The layout of the input jacks is like in many other meters and there are some limitations for measurements mainly because high current can heat up the shunt making it change its resistance. Before we can continue with the test we have to add batteries and it happens by loosening the screw above the stand, using the stand to remove the battery cover and inserting two AA batteries into the battery cover, so not into the meter, but into the cover. Then place the cover back on the meter, tighten the screw, there's actually metal insert where the screw goes, so that's a good thing, and then we can turn on the meter. And straight away we noticed the first thing that is the most annoying thing in my opinion in multimeters and that is the beeping sound when turning on the meter or changing the mode. And obviously there's beeping sound when pressing the button, but luckily the beeping sound is quite pleasant. It's a little bit lower frequency than usually and it's not as annoying as some other multimeters. I've checked the manual and I've tried few tests, but I haven't found any way to turn off the beeps. Another thing you'll notice straight away is the display. The backlight isn't too bright, it's quite dim, which is good for the power consumption. And the viewing angles are great. The display is readable from any angle that one could consider using the multimeter. There's one icon on the display that I want to point out, and that is the out power of icon. It can be disabled by pressing the blue button while powering on the meter. The out power of has been disabled. Let's then test the voltage range, how the hour shoot, how the auto ranging speed and so on. Like you can see, when the meter detects that the measured voltage is higher than the current range, it will show zero until it figures out the correct range and therefore there isn't any overshoot. And auto ranging speed is decent, not fast. And the accuracy 10.01. 
and 2.051 for the test voltages. So they were 1 to 3 counts off, so nothing wrong there. And if we try the manual range, it's much faster than the out range, of course. Even though the display update rate is a little bit faster than other meters I've reviewed, maybe 4 times a second versus the 3 times a second, the measurement speed is still about the same. Maybe two updates to get to the correct reading, so this might be a little bit faster than the other two meters. Next I'll test the millivolt range and volt range by connecting the test leads to the multimeter and other ends to the adjustable power supply. I'd like to test if there's any actual differences when measuring voltages from the low impedance sources. I'll start by adopting 300 millivolts from the power supply and checking that both are reading 299 millivolts or so. Maybe a little bit differences on the last digit and maybe rounding, so they are basically reading it the same. I'll also test with 500 millivolts, which reads as 501.2 millivolts on millivolt range and 501 millivolts on the volts range, so they are still the same, but how they are performing at the very low end of the range. For example here I'm testing 13 millivolts and it's 13.2 0 something millivolts at millivolt range. So they are same in the lower end of the 600 millivolt range as well. Ovon didn't remember to mention this on the third manual, but Unity mentioned this in Chinese manual and kinda mentioned in the English manual, and that is the millivolt range without the test it connected. The reading can be very random. The explanation can be found on the Chinese manual. If we see the 60 and 600 millivolt ranges, we can see that the input impedance, that's what those mean, are 100 mega ohms and 1 giga ohm. And such high input impedances, any kind of noise on the environment can cause some random readings on the meter. So that is perfectly normal and those readings will go away when you connect the test leads to something. While talking about different ranges, let's have a look at points where outranging will change the range. Going down from 60 volts to 6 volts, the limit is 5.8 and going back to the limit is 6.2. So there is plus minus 200 count hysteresis. Voltage measurements are now done and it's time to test the continuity mode. I like the tone of this meter's beeper and I I really hope the continuity mode will be fast. To test that I'll perform this non-scientific test which will tell if the speed is too slow or fast enough for the real world use. And maybe miss here or there, but still reasonably good performance. As a side note, those latchet beeps are quite long. Another speed that can be frustratingly slow in some multimeters is the resistance reading with outer range. To test how fast this is, I got 20k and 10 ohm resistors. With 20k resistor the speed is ok for most cases, but for sorting hundreds of random resistors this might be too slow. It will depend on the use case of course. The 10 ohm resistor will show why it's good to have option to select range manually. It takes up to 3 seconds to measure it, that time will go for hunting for low enough range. Selecting the correct 600 ohm range manually cuts the speed to just a few display updates, less than a second. The diode mode has maximum voltage of about 3 volts and it can light up regular 5mm white LED dimly, but the color and the condition are still visible. This LED is 3.6 volts one, but due to very low test current the voltage zone is much lower. At 20 mA test current voltage drop will be at 3.6 volts or thereabout. Of course if white LEDs will light up, so will red LEDs which are much easier to light up. No problems with diode check as far as I know. Measuring capacitance of multiple hundreds of microfarads can take long time or very long time. To test that I'll use 470 microfarad capacitor. It took about 6 seconds from contact to get the reading. For reference, O1P35 took 8 seconds. No big difference. The max min button has that extra feature which I will demonstrate with temperature mode. First there is the maximum reading which works just like one could imagine. It shows the maximum reading. Minimum reading shows smallest reading after the max function has been enabled. 
Next one is the interesting one. Maximum minus minimum, which will show difference between maximum and minimum reading. So maximum of 27 degrees minus minimum of 20 degrees equals 7 degrees. Holding the max min button for a couple of seconds will go back to live reading. You can't check the current value while locking maximum and minimum values. I programmed this microcontroller to output about 25 Hz square wave, which I'm currently measuring with O1P35. It shows correct frequency. But look what happens when I do the same with the UT139C. It won't show the same frequency. It will show 0 Hz. Going to do the cycle mode correct 50% value will be shown for a moment before switching back to 0 percent. Correct frequency will be shown as well when going back to frequency mode, but that will also switch to 0 Hz. The UT139C measures frequency of true AC signal, meaning signal has to go above and below the 0 volt line, while O1P35 can get rid of the DC part and measure the frequency of the AC part of the signal. To show that Unity isn't the only one with this problem, here's what Fluke 101 reads, 20 kHz and 78%. Now those readings are just caused by some noises on the signal. How can we get rid of the DC? With high pass filter, for example capacitor in series with the test lead, like shown here. That is enough to make the UT139C read the frequency and do the cycle correctly. And while we are at it, Let's confirm that the fluke will also read the correct values with high pass filter. And yes, it can. Correct values. Leaving current measurements for the future video. Next and the last feature is NCV. Feature that can detect presence of electric fields caused by for example live mains wire. Beeps and lines on the display indicate that the wire is live. This feature doesn't need anything connected into the input checks. One thing has to be noted, this is a very sensitive feature and it does detect stuff like waving a hand near the meter. But still, if this detects something, act like there's actually something to detect. And if this doesn't beep, still act like there might be something. Be careful when working with stuff that might be connected to the mains. As some kind of conclusion, I like the overall build quality and feel of this multimeter. These probe holders also stop multimeter from sliding on the table too easily. The shape of the backside is nicely curved and fits nicely on the big hand and soft rubber gives good grip. I would like to see option to turn off beeps, but luckily the tone is nice. The selector switch takes a little more force to turn that I would like, but it's not too bad. It snaps in the correct positions nicely. Two AA batteries instead of one 9 volt battery is a very welcome thing. The display has very good viewing angles, but it doesn't have bar graph and the backlight turns off quite quickly. Having the peak to peak feature is nice, but having for example average reading would also be great. The current clamp feature would be nice if the clamp came in the box. Four modes in one switch position could have been divided into two or three positions. Not a big deal for me as I don't use diode and capacitance modes that often. The NCV feature is nice once you learn to detect which beeps are false detections. The probes aren't bad, there aren't anything especially bad to say about them. Okay probes for a budget multimeter. I'll give this thumbs up as the negative things are just minor problems, which one could get used to. If you like these reviews, hit the like button somewhere over there. Also while you are there, check out the link to my Twitter account, link in the description. One more thing I'll ask you to do is, if you haven't already, is to subscribe for more videos, button is somewhere under the video.